Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Tuesday, December 30th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. An iguana apocalypse is approaching overnight, and by morning, there could be lizards falling from the trees in Florida. Buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. A clipper system could bring more snow to Michigan, up to 8 inches forecast due to that lake effect snow. We're talking mostly western Michigan, including Kalamazoo and Top Knot's boyhood home. As the Michigan winter storm snow totals roll in, they are setting records across the UP. As Michigan residents get busy shoveling out from the bomb cyclone winter storm, The National Weather Service is reporting record snowfall for a pair of Michigan cities. At the Marquette National Weather Service office west of the city, 17.1 inches of snow was recorded, which surpassed the old record of 11.5 inches set back on December 29th in 2001. In addition, Salt St. Marie recorded 6.6 inches of snow, breaking the record for December 29th, Back in 1988, also the eastern upper peninsula recorded the highest snowfall total over 24.5 inches in Eckerman in Chippewa County, south of Taquamanon Falls in the western UP, Big Bay, north of Marquette and Champion, west of Marquette, each reported 24 inches. Wow, the storm initially knocked out power to 116,000 customers, now is moving into Canada, and that cold front is dropping down into Florida. Well, there may be good news for Michigan in the Upper Peninsula, but it's the worst snowpack on record for Colorado. In fact, going back all the way to the 1970s. How do you like them apples? Here's a shot of Dillon, where there's usually much more snow than now, but... The West is breaking records with some of the lowest snowpack ever. The good news is that in the coming 14 days, all of this is going to change for the West as a very moist pattern is setting up. And well, La Nina may be over. And what do I mean by a wet pattern? Let's take a look at this. Al Gore would be proud. Here we are, January 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, yeah. A lot of those basins are going to change by mid-January, and that's good news for the snowpack and for the West. Well, and for fires and groundwater, good news there. And so let's walk the GFS model through. Here we are right now. Here is your Wednesday and your Thursday. A nice clipper moving through the Northeast is going to be dumping more snow Thursday. And then by Thursday, we've got more moisture coming into California here, which is going to be starting that pattern of wet moisture for the West with storm after storm dumping heavy mountain snow. And by mid-January, we're talking snow all the way down into Mexico, perhaps. But the Four Corners region getting a nice amount of moisture here around the 10th and 11th of January. And thermodynamics showing that just in the next few hours... We're going to be seeing this record cold plume push down into Florida. Um, Good news is that's it, just one day. But we do have some pretty cold temps up here for the northern and eastern portion and the Great Lakes here for the end of the week, Thursday and Friday. It's going to be very chilly, dangerously cold in many areas. And now the full forecast. An Alberta clipper will bring lake effect snow downwind of the Great Lakes With the highest snow totals downwind of Lakes Erie and Ontario, they could pick up up to four feet of snow. Ho, ho, ho. Snow squalls may impact New Year's Eve travel during the evening and overnight hours across parts of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. Heavy rain will bring a flash flooding threat for Southern California on New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. What, What better New Year's Eve present can that bring? Take a look at the freeze warnings all the way down. Frost warnings all the way down towards Miami. And hard freeze warnings down to Tampa Bay, for goodness sakes. So bring in those sensitive plants and heed the warnings. The iguana apocalypse is coming in just the next few hours. Tornado HQ showing that lake effect snow affecting the northeast. 
like a beast. Europe is to freeze as well this weekend with Sierra snowpack recovering. Good news there. This week, January 3rd and 4th, marks the opening act of a widespread cold and snow setup that will cause disruption across much of Europe. High latitude blocking is forcing Arctic air south, undercutting milder Atlantic flow. As the cold digs in, precipitation zones riding along the boundary will increasingly fall as snow rather than rain. And take a look at these models. Yeah, absolutely insane. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Th yeah, Europe and Russia are about to be buried. We're going to be talking about some record snows over in those regions in the next few weeks. And some update on the Arctic ice extent. Arctic ice extent is now the highest in over a decade, going back all the way to 2014. And Arctic ice area, also the highest in over a decade. You won't see these headlines on the mainstream media because they are keeping you in the dark. But we're not. We're revealing the fact that in the last three years, the average satellite-based temperature of the glower, global lower atmosphere has dropped 0.4 degrees C, actually 0.5. And we are now hovering just 0.4 degrees above the 40-year average. Not much catastrophic warming there to be seen now, is there? Seismic update. No quakes of note. Some activity rocking up here uh, in the Yukon near Alaska. Overall, low-level activity worldwide, which is good news. We've got some inland quakes here in South America, 5.3 in Bolivia, a 4.2 in Argentina, and a 4.4 in Argentina as well. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News for the day, December 30th, Okomo Volcano, now erupting. That could be due to the, some of that seismic activity up there in Alaska. A new volcanic ash advisory. Popo, volcanic ash possible. Fuego to 15,000 feet. Ibu, an eruption was reported today. Semadu to 15,000 feet. We've got sporadic emissions at Santa Guito. Shishalden, nope. Nothing going on there. Volcanic ash possible at Raventador. Manam to 11,000 feet. Pavlov on the list. Semadu to 15,000 foot. Santiguito to 13. Fuego to 14. Ibu, an eruption was reported, as well as Semadu. Who knew? Now you do. And a 17,000 foot blast at Raventador wraps up the list. And that brings us over to space weather, where flaring has been meager over the last 24 hours. But we do have... A few CMEs headed our way. And the WSA Endless Spiral will show them leaving the sun. Actually, it's a cannibal event. And now we have a double spike that may occur on the first and the second of the new year. The geomagnetic forecast shows G1 geomagnetic storm potential for the first, but nothing significant as far as space weather as we head into solar minimum and head into solar cycle 26. We can turn that off now, can't we? A 14,000-year-old skull with mysterious flat top found in an ancient village, startling archaeologists. The man had a tabular, erect-type skull with a flat top, suggesting a distinct status in a community and, well, cranial deformation. Definitely coming into play here. This is some extreme. Man, this guy is like the Frankenstein of Mexico or South America, I forget where these skulls were found, but some definite cranial deformation going on there. As a result, not only was it intentional cranial deformation identified for the first time at this type of site, but also a variant of cranial modeling not previously reported in the region of Mesoamerica. Yeah, there you go. The man had a peculiar tabular erect type skull with the front and back of the head purposely flattened. The skull also had an unusually flat top, giving it a cube-like shape similar to the rare tabular superior form. Archaeologists uncovered the surprising 1,400-year-old skull in an ancient village in Mexico, usual for, unusual for both its flat top and cube-like shape. Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History announced the find. Officials said the skull was found 
in the Balkan de Montezuma archaeological zone in the northern Huasteca region of Tamulapis. Say that five times fast. And there is Frankenstein from Mexico. Are you looking for high-speed internet, but you don't have any lines in your neighborhood? Or perhaps the only options are super expensive and really slow. Well, check out Starlink, the fastest internet, uh, the fastest satellite internet on the planet with blazing speeds. And now there is no cost for Starlink. It's free. Thank you, Elon. You just pay 80 bucks a month in select areas. There are no upfront hardware costs. That means you don't have to pay 600 bucks for Starlink anymore. It's free. Just pay the monthly bill and, well, get some blazing fast internet. Type in your service address and see if you qualify. That's it. And while you save money and get free Starlink, we get a free month. So you help the channel and you also help your own preparedness. Because if you've got backup generators, when the grid goes down, you'll still have the internet up in space. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Share the video. Happy New Year. Wow, it's fast approaching 2026. Do us a favor. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do for as little as $1 a month. You can watch all of our podcasts in one place, commercial free. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boo. Noo, noo.